Hello world, today I'd like to talk about the new C++17 utility optional. Let's take a look at the basic usage of optional. Here we just have an optional integer we're calling i. And on default construction it is going to be empty and thus not holding an integer at all. We can test for that by optional's explicit conversion to bool. Here we'll be printing out filled if the optional has a value. We'll be printing out empty if it does not. Build the file, we run it, and we get the output as empty. So let's try putting a value in it. Build it again, run it. Now it has a value even though that value is zero. We can verify that the value itself doesn't matter by changing it. Build again and still filled. Still the optional converts to true. If we want to do anything with the value that the optional holds once it has the value, we need to dereference it much like you do with a pointer or a smart pointer. So let's take a look at that. Here we are going to print out the value of i before and after we increment it. Let's take a look as to how that goes. Build it, run it. 42 before, 43 after. Optional also allows us to reset the value after we've been using it to go back to the state where the uh, optional is empty. And here we can see once again that the before and after are 42 and 43, and then after we reset it, it is empty. There are ways to observe the value within optional through member functions, but they do behave in a slightly different way. And that is that the operators themselves, star and arrow, are going to be undefined in their behavior for what happens if the optional does not actually hold a value at that time. Whereas the member function version dot value will throw a bad optional access exception if the class does not actually have a value stored within it. So calling the dot value member function is going to have some potential performance degradation, however, it is going to provide you with better behavior if it's possible that your optional is empty. An important thing to know about optional is that the memory for the value it holds is required to be stored within the optional itself. We can verify how that affects the size of our optional through some direct observations. Let's take a look. What I'm doing here is I'm tricking the compiler into telling me what the size of an object is by passing it to this function through this template interface. Um, and I'm going to exploit that here for us to see the size of the optional. Let's take a look. Here we can see that though the size of an integer in this compiler is four, we can see that the size of my optional of int is eight. And that is because it's gonna be storing whether or not it is storing a value. And that is going to have some alignment potentially. There's no actual guarantees as to what the size is of these optionals are. The point here is just that the larger your object, the larger the option will be. Also, the optional stores more data than just the value itself. Now we can double check. And we see that for double, the size of the double here is eight, but the size of the optional of double is 16. Alignment is an interesting thing. Now we can see when our value is of size 42, we're only getting one extra byte in our optional. So its size is 43. So there you have it. Optional grows with the size of the element underneath. It is not allowed to do any dynamic memory allocations within it. It's going to be in place new in the buffer inside of it in order to initialize the memory or tear it down uh, with a shorter lifetime or equivalent lifetime to the optional itself. Let's take a look at the relational operators that optional comes with. In the more straightforward cases, we know that integers themselves are comparable. I'm just using less than here as an example. It comes with all the relational operators, and they only forward on to the underlying values version of those comparison operators. So we find that we can compare an integer to an integer, an integer to an optional event, an optional event to an integer, or an optional event to an optional event. Optional does not require the types in the comparison to be exactly the same. The requirement is that the underlying values themselves are comparable for that particular operation. So let's take a look at that. 
note here that we can compare optional float and optional int because floats and ints themselves are comparable. However, we cannot compare a, an optional of a string with an optional of a float because there is no underlying comparison operator between string and float. The keen observer may notice that we did not need to dereference these optionals in order to you do the comparison between them. There was a design decision made with optional that the comparison operators would work not just between the optional class but with the underlying values. This allows you to insert optionals into things like stidmap and have them just work. Uh, but it does lend itself to a particular gotcha. Let's consider optional of bool. We're going to create an optional bool here. I'm going to initialize it to false. And then I'm going to test it in a few ways. So the first way that I'm going to test it is just to see whether or not uh, its evaluation as a boolean is true or false and I'll print those conditions out based on those. And I will additionally check to see whether or not it compares to true or false, and likewise print those out. Notice there's no else if in here. Should all four conditions prove true, then we could see all four print out. So let's take a look what that goes. So here is optional constructed from the value false. Note that it is both the case that the optional evaluates to true and optional equals false is true. So optional is both true and false. Let's take a look at what we get when we construct optional from the value true. Here we see that both optional is true and the optional compares true to true. And finally, let's construct an optional bool but not give it an initial value. Now we have that the optional is false, and it happens to be the case that optional equals false is false, and optional equals true is false. Thus, our optional is neither true nor false. Think about how optional is actually implemented here. This isn't entirely surprising. We have these comparison operators that allow you to compare the underlying value of the optional with, the, with a value that is reasonable for that type. Because bool is comparable with bool, obviously, we get into this sort of a confusing situation where testing the class is not the same as testing whether or not the class equals equals false or equals equals true. Please don't let this dissuade you from using optional though. It's a very well designed class, it's been thoroughly thought out, it's been in production for a very long time and is totally worth checking out. So I hope you get a lot of mileage out of it and I hope it meets your needs. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If anything wasn't clear or you would like to hear about another topic in the future, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to hear more.